Italy was an interesting actor in World War I because it was one of the original members of the Triple Alliance. So in 1882, Italy becomes a member of the Triple Alliance. The whole reason why it was called a Triple Alliance is because it was between Italy, Austria-Hungary, and Germany. But despite being part of that defensive pact that they would defend each other if, if, if any of these other parties like Russia were to attack them or France were to attack them, it was an awkward alliance because Italy was a historical enemy of Austria-Hungary. Austria-Hungary had some territory, especially some territory where some Italian speakers were. Some Italian nationalists were interested in recapturing the, or, or having claims on some of that territory. I've circled some of that right over here. So right from the get-go, it was an awkward alliance. And even in that first triple alliance, Italy got an exception for this defensive alliance. It says, we don't want to be at war with Great Britain. Then in 1902, it, Italy gets into another secret, or I guess this is the first of many secret deals, with France. And so if you've ever played diplomacy, this is what diplomacy is all about. You make a deal with one person, but maybe in secret you're making exceptions with other people. They get into a secret pact, secret pact with France where Italy is essentially saying, look, you know, even though we're a member of this triple alliance, and we've already said that we're not going to uh, be at war with Great Britain, we're also going to say that for France as well. We're, we're, we're really not in a mood to be at war with you. So then when you fast forward to 1914, and we're now at the beginning of World War I, August, Germany declares, you know, in July, Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia, Russia begins to mobilize, Germany declares war on Russia and on France, Italy, because of this kind of awkwardness in its triple alliance, actually decides to stay neutral. So Italy stays neutral. And their justification for staying neutral is that the triple alliance is a defensive pact. It says, hey, we're going to defend each other if anyone attacks us. But they're saying that in, in 1914, at the beginning of World War I, it was Austria-Hungary that decided to take the offensive. It was Germany that took the offensive, just based on mobilization in Russia, that took the offensive against France and, and, and in terms of declaring war on Russia. So Italy says, hey, look, look this is a defensive pact. The, tri the other two members of the triple alliance, they're being... They're being offensive, we don't want, that means that we, are, we aren't bound to it. We're only bound to it in the event of defense. And, but you could imagine a lot of it was them just trying to figure out who's likely to win this, in which scenario are they likely to gain the most. So you fast forward to 1915, in particular, April 26th. April 26th, the Italians are negotiating with the Allies, thinking about what type of territory that could capture, especially from Austria-Hungary. And on April 26th, they signed the Treaty of London, which at this point is a secret. Treaty of London. It's not broadcast to the other members of the Triple Alliance, but it's an agreement with the Triple Entente that, hey, look, we are on your side. We are going to declare war on the Central Powers imminently. And they do so on May... In May 1915, on May 3rd, they, they, they back out of the Triple Alliance, out of Triple Alliance, out of Triple Alliance. And then on May, May 23rd, they declare war on their historical enemy, but one of the co-signers of the Triple Alliance, declare war on the Austro-Hungarian Empire, on the Austro-Hungarian Austro Empire. And as we'll see, this was actually Italy's entering on the war, into the war on the side of the Allies against Austria-Hungary actually played a major role in the eventual downfall of the Austro-Hungarians. And I'll go into that into more detail in the next video.